Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. It's nice to see you. Today, as promised, we'll be talking about all of my stuff that I'm taking with me for effectively backpacking around the world for the foreseeable future. Now, a few disclaimers before going any further. Number one, I'll be doing mainly photography, making YouTube videos, and this is how I make an income. So all of the camera gear that you would see in this video, um, you don't really need it if you're not doing any of that. Now, if you do want to know more about the camera gear, do watch that other video from a week and a half ago. There are only two additions from that uh, video that I've not talked about, and that is the Fuji 8 to 16 and the Rode NTG mic. Now, the 8 to 16 originally, I was actually going to sell it but I spend more time using it. And to be honest, in certain situations, it becomes invaluable, especially for video like right now, but for photography as well. I took it out into London and I got a few decent photos and I thought, you know what, I've got the room for it. Um, I might as well bring it, I'll regret it if I don't. And then the Rode NTG mic, which is what's filming me right now. Honestly, I've tried my best to get on with a lav. I just can't get on with it. Now, the other disclaimer is that even though this is technically carry on compatible or carry on only, so to speak, um, it depends on which airline. I know that the smaller Asian airlines, for example, or even some smaller European airlines will only allow you um, one bag on board and the other bag will have to be checked in. And the final disclaimer is, even though I've traveled extensively throughout most of my life, this is my first time where I will effectively be living out of two bags, sorry, living and working out of two bags. So I am about 99.9% .9 sure that I've overpacked. And when I make this video in a year's time, I'm pretty sure I'll have less items once I know what I'm using, what I'm not using. But for the purpose of this, keep in mind that I am not a experienced backpacker who's been traveling around the world out of a bag for the last 10 years. It's my first time and I'm just taking the lessons I've learned through previous extensive travel into this. Okay, now let me show you what the bags look like when they're fully packed. And this is the main bag. Now, if you look closely, you'll actually see that there is a sling attached to the top but we'll talk about them more in a minute. But generally, that's it. It is quite heavy mine, so I hope no one weighs it, but it should be okay. So this goes on my back. On my back, it actually feels all right, mainly because of the hip belt and the sling that's attached to the top is actually a really nice headrest. Now, in terms of the camera bag, that is going on my front. Am I gonna attract attention? I hope not. Uh, there are plenty of people walking around with big bags. This is basically the most efficient way I've found to not only carry everything that I need, but also be, um, what's the word? Uh, the word I'm looking for there is modular. I can't remember the word, but basically what I'm trying to say is that the whole thing is like a system, and rather than just having this one huge, big hiking bag where everything goes in, having it split into a small sling, into this bag, and obviously the main bag means that it's a more modular, useful, let's say, system of bags that I can use when I get to the location. So for example, if I'm only going out with a couple of lenses, I can take the sling. If I'm going out with some of the zoom lenses or for, for the whole day, I can take the 15 liter bag. And maybe if I'm even going away for a weekend, I can just take the, um, the bigger bag and that's enough. Okay, let's start with the actual camera bag first. Now, even though I've covered it in a previous video, I just wanna quickly show you how I pack it for travel. This is not how I would pack it if I'm, let's say, in Istanbul or whatever place, and I'm just going out to take photos. This is simply how I transport everything from A to B. This whole section is also entirely filmed on my iPhone with the audio, so I presume it sounds and looks awful. If not, the phone is just my face. But the reason for it is because I just wanna show you how everything looks inside, so you don't have to imagine what a camera inside the bag looks like. Okay, so let's get started with what's in the sides of the bag, because that's quite important. I've got a couple of these straps right here, so it's good to strap anything on. And also this little, come on, this little thing, which is a hero clip. This thing is absolutely incredible because it simply means I can attach it to the bag like that and then hang it if I happen to be in the restroom or sitting by a table or anywhere where I don't wanna put the bag on the floor. All the bags have them, but this one is located just in there for easy access. The other side just has a pack of tissues because you know, you never know, I'll usually dribble or spill my coffee down myself. So it's very useful. Now let's start from the bottom of the bag. 
So it will open it right here, like so, and then open it up like that. So right here at the bottom is the 50 to 140. In there is the mic, so the Rode Mic NTG. And here wrapped up in this thing is my mini tripod so it doesn't scratch everything. In the middle, we have the XT4. And then if I flip this up, in there we have the 8 to 16 F28. Okay, let's unzip the other side. So again, there's the mic, there's the other lens, and here is the 16 to 55, sits in there. Here I have the 33 F14. So opening from the top, we have the two GoPros, we have the XT4 with the 18, and if you remember, the 33 is right there. All right, now we're onto the final compartment, which is the laptop compartment of the bag. However, you'll notice there is no laptop in here. It's just accessories that I might need quite quickly and like a little secret pocket right in the back, which is where I store my passport nice and safe. Now, the reason I don't put any laptops or iPads in here is because I want to split the weight evenly between the two bags, but also because I don't want the lenses, which are in there, to push against the um, laptop and potentially dent it. So I don't need to store it in there. Now, in terms of what's in here, I'll just quickly pull a few bits out just to give you an idea. Oops. First things first is this head torch, just in case you never know, always useful to have. Now, the thing that fell out is actually a little folding iPhone um, tripod mount. And I'll show you where that goes in a minute. I've got a couple of SSDs, specifically these SanDisks. So if I need to do any work on the flight, I can. Um, SD card reader, what else we got? Uh, cables for the hard drives, um, battery pack, just in case. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, that's a power adapter, I'll show you why. Uh, that's a European power adapter, just in case, I'll show you why. Um, a couple of USB-C power cables. What else, what else? Here's my power brick, the other two are in the other bag, but one's enough. And then what else, what else? This is like a little folding mini tripod. So basically that goes together with that and it means I can use my phone as a stand or even use it um, to take, you know, um, what is it, time lapses, things like that. Finally, I've got this little USB-C, uh, 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 USB-C to USB-A. It's basically like a 128 gig little memory card. So this is really useful if I need to print anything off um, and they don't have an email or I don't have Wi-Fi, I can keep my most important documents in here just in case I need to print them during traveling. And I think, yep, that's it. Okay, now let's move on to the bigger bags. So in terms of the bags themselves, they are the Peak Design bag, specifically the Peak Design 3 litre sling and the new Peak Design 30 litre travel bag. The reason I've gone for the smaller 30 litre, not the bigger 45 litre, well, two reasons. Number one is the 45 litre is actually quite a bit heavier than this. And in terms of actual usable space, I don't think there's that much more in it. Plus, by the time I attach the little sling to the top, I'm effectively you know, near that kind of space anyway. And as I've said earlier, by having it as a sling attached to the bag, it just makes the whole system a bit more modular. Another reason for the 30 liter is that when this bag is actually empty, I can zip up this compression bit, and this then turns into like a 27 liter bag, could be wrong around that specifically, but let's say 26 to 28 litre bag, which means it's perfect if I'm going on a hike and I need to bring more stuff with me, or if I'm, as I've said, having a weekend away or a few days away from my main um, Airbnb or location, and I just need like a weekend bag. So rather than lugging this huge travel bag around, I've got a compact, let's say, weekend bag that also transforms into a travel bag. So in here, you'll find a little, um, packing cube, it's like a north face packing cube I've had for ages. And if you remember in the camera video I did a couple of weeks ago, I said that I had a bag of random bits. Well, that's that very bag of random bits. So let's go through it very quickly and I'll just show you what's inside and just quickly mention why. Okay, let's start over here. Bunch of camera and sensor and lens cleaning things, little blower thing, lens and sensor swabs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, XT4 charger, GoPro charger, multi-tool, 
HDMI cable just in case I want to watch something on TV um, from my laptop, remote release for the X-T4, Ethernet cable just in case the Wi-Fi sucks, batteries for the X-T4 and the GoPro, spare straps for the X-T4 like a neck strap and a wrist strap, two extra power bricks, then we have an iPhone SD card reader, I'll explain that in a separate video, anchor multi adapter thing for the iPad and the Mac, spare SD cards, a bit of uh, gaffer tape if I need to tape something down, spare cap, um, a bunch of cables, so um, laptop cable, USB-C cables, and finally we have the little uh, Sennheiser mic, which is the shotgun mic that I'll be using outside because the NTG that I'm using right now is a bit better for indoors. And that's pretty much everything that goes in the sling. All right, we're now on to the main bag. So let's start with the outside pockets. It's not a huge amount. So this one is just an umbrella. I'm not sure if I'll bring it or not, but I imagine it can be useful sometimes. So put that aside. On the other pocket, side pocket here, a couple of things. So first and foremost is this little folding um, bottle, drinking water. Um, fantastic in case I want to fill up and have a drink somewhere. Um, saves me buying a ton of disposable bottles and it's just useful to have. The other thing in here that I'll probably put inside the bag is a little Sawyer water filter. Um, so if I'm somewhere and I don't particularly trust the tap water, uh, then I can filter it using this. It is a hiking one as well, so technically it could filter pond water and that kind of stuff. But so far I've been using it, it's been absolutely fine. Now the other outside pocket is just on the front right here. And in there, there are a couple of things, so open it up. So first and foremost is sunglasses, because you'll probably need them. A hat, or a cap, sorry. Um, this thing here is the buff, I'm sure those of you who've traveled a lot or just like to uh, do hiking and that, you'll know what a buff is. It is really, really good. Basically, it's like a really thin scarf like thing you put over your head, and you can use it as a face mask. You can use it, obviously, to warm up your neck as a scarf. You can even use it as a, like a, a head covering if you need to. Just very versatile, great to have, um, especially on the road. A couple of face masks. Unfortunately, some places in the world you'll still need them. Moving on, we have a hero clip. So it's another one of these clips that I've mentioned earlier where I can attach it to the bag and then hang it in a restroom or get it off the ground if I need to. Very useful. Um, a little padlock so I can lock up this bag if I need to do it quickly. And then finally, some uh, earplugs for the flight or if um, I have noisy neighbors in whatever hotel or Airbnb I am staying in. That's everything on the outside. Let's now move into the main compartment. Let's start with the easy bit, which is here. It's obviously the laptop and the iPad and they sit in there like so. We have a North Face uh, waterproof jacket. This bag has a bunch of shaving and trimming equipment. Equipment, I mean a shaver for God's sake, but basically it's a little uh, uh, one blade and it's fantastic because it's small, but also you can charge it via USB, which means I don't have to bring any awkward plugs or adapters, which is always a bonus. Now we have another bag full of random bits and bobs, like a spare door for the X-T4, spare um, mounts and bits for the GoPro. Another little bag full of audio equipment, and in there is the lav, is the Rode wireless, and also a wired pair of headphones. And the final little bag is just all of the plug adapters for the power bricks, so I can use the power bricks in the UK, Europe, Australia, etc. All of them sit in there. It's quite bulky because I have three adapters, but they're definitely worthwhile having. Moving on, we have the toiletry kit. Um, this is like a little clear bag from Think Tank. I think it's a cable management bag, but it does a job. So the usual bits like moisturizers, lip balm, um, what else do we have here? Like a toothbrush, a tongue cleaner thing. This toothbrush is actually incredible. It's a little Philips One. Yeah, Philips One and it's USB-C rechargeable and really small. So again, saves bringing like extra cables and chargers and that means that everything that I own is effectively USB or USB-C powered. So great spare toothbrush head, um, moisturizer, uh, deodorant, hair product. Oh, this thing is really cool. It's the camera sensor cleaner. 
so obviously I can't put it with the other stuff, it has to go in the clear bag. Um, ah, this is the Sunamask Oud, which is the really nice smelly stuff, and I use it all the time, it's great, better than the spray stuff that people use. Um, oh yeah, this is so cool, it's a Travel Buddy um, solid soap bag. Basically, if you use solid soap, like I do, then you can put a wet soap bar in here. The bar dries, but the water doesn't go anywhere. So it's really clever, actually. And uh, solid soap is by far way better. By far way better, does that make sense? Is better than having liquid soap, especially when you're traveling. Finally, we have another one of those bags, and inside is actually chewable toothpaste. So it's a few tablets that you will take, chew them, and it turns into toothpaste. Again, saves having a whole tube with me and it doesn't go against your liquid allowance. So that is all the toiletry stuff. Next up, there is a small first aid kit. It'll also have a few like medicines like paracetamol, diarrhea tablets, just the general stuff that you'd probably need um, if you're out and about. Um, what else, what else? So, socks. I have in total eight or nine pairs of socks and I actually stuff them into all the little gaps left once I've packed the bag, and that way I'm using up all the available space and not wasting anything, which is important, so I can take them all out. At the top is a little puffer jacket, just a Uniqlo standard folding puffer jacket. In here I have a spare pair of trainers and some flip-flops. Some people do like to travel with just one pair of trainers and flip-flops, but I don't know, I just think with like trainers, it's always nice to have a spare pair, but also the trainers that I'll be wearing are a bit bulky because they are running and long distance walking um, trainers, and these are actually like really smart trainers, so I can wear them for like dinner and stuff like that. And flip-flops you obviously need for obvious reasons. So, in here we have two packing cubes full of clothes, but we'll talk about them in a minute. And finally, the tripod. Now, the reason I keep the tripod in the bag, well, two reasons. Number one, it doesn't actually take up any more space. Because of how it sort of fits in, everything just goes around it and fills any gaps. So it works out really well. Um, and also because it's not hanging from the side of the bag, no one can see a tripod, which means no one will assume it's full of camera gear. Before moving on to that, there's a few more bits here. At the top, I have, of the zipper bit, some elastic exercise bands. So if there's no decent gym where I'll be staying, I can do some very basic resistance exercises with these, as well as stretching. And to me, exercise is very important. Um, if I don't exercise every day, I feel like a lazy, useless slob. So I have to bring them. Um, and in the other pocket is the divider from the Peak Design Sling and a little folding travel towel, just in case. Two more pockets on the side, and in here there is a spoon, uh, again, just in case, and an air tag because to track it. And the final pocket, a couple of bits, so a few little bungee cords to attach more stuff, and also another little padlock, which is for the other um, 15 liter bag. So that's everything here. Let's move this out of the way and look at the packing cubes for the clothes. Now, these are Peak Design packing cubes. The brand doesn't really matter. It's more so the fact they're compressible, compressible, compression packing cubes. So basically what it means is you pack everything in and then there's another zip that you can do up and it just squashes everything down. In, pra in practical terms, it literally like reduces the size by a third, which means I can get you know, more clothes into a very small space. So we'll start with the first one and we'll just open it up. And this has a few bits. So, in total, I have eight pairs of pants, which all sit here. I then have three, or is it, yeah, three um, gym slash hiking exercise shirts. So if I have to sweat, then that's what those are for. Um, gym hiking shorts, swimming shorts, which can be used as gym shorts as well, and two pairs of smart shorts. Now, one thing about clothes before we move on is all of this is designed for, I say designed, but it's all been put together for temperatures up to like 10 degrees Celsius. I think if I go somewhere colder than 10 degrees Celsius, I would probably want to bring some thermals, gloves, 
and a, let's say a hat. Um, but most of my travels are aimed to be in places which are 10 degrees or above. Um, but obviously if I go somewhere cold, there'll be basically just an another pair of thermals, like North Face thermals and a pair of gloves that would come with me. But anyway, I am waffling. And the final Peak Design bag has some smart t-shirts, so specifically um, five t-shirts, four in here, one I'll be wearing, a smart um, jumper, this is a white one, the black one I'll be wearing, and finally, I have a smart shirt and a pair of black chinos. I also have a pair of white what, cream chinos, which I will be wearing on the flight to save space in here. Right, that is pretty much everything. All right, we're basically done with all of the stuff. It's a complete mess behind me that I now need to tidy up. But hopefully this video gave you just a bit of an idea of what I'll be taking with me on this trip. As I've said before, this is my first time packing for a backpacking type trip. So I think I've definitely overpacked, especially with the technology side of things. But nonetheless, I still think it's fairly minimal um, considering that I could live out of this bag, you know, ideally indefinitely and work as well. So if you do have any suggestions or comments or questions, please write them down below. I've tried to at least list everything out. Again, I'll put a link below to my gear page on my website, but that will be improved over time. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and next time I see you and speak to you will be in Istanbul. So until then, stay safe and see you soon. Bye.